access list. And this will be the last uh, full walk, and the next few walks we'll be picking up some of the mist stuff after the next test, which is essentially uh, review. So I sent this out. This has got the taxis on it, the cephalo taxis, and we've got Tasuga on here and a couple of, uh, well, viburnum, and we're going to be adding to some of the Tasuga cultivars. But we'll start with the taxis. We'll go over there to the hemlock, and then we'll come back and do some of the cephalo taxis and, uh, and onwards. And starting with the taxis, they're probably the most common group of evergreens that we'll see in the landscape generally. I'm going to talk about them generally, and then I'll talk about these two specific uh, types here. They're, they're popular in the landscape because they're really, really hardy. They're really, really tough. And they regenerate from old growth. So you can prune this back almost right to the stump, and it will regrow. And if you did that with a cedar, it won't. We talked about that before. They're salt tolerant. They can be clipped because of the dense foliage characteristics, so they can be pruned. You'll often see topiaries or hedges uh, made into these. And in fact, we planted a new hedge at Cuddy's last uh, spring that we're going to clip and it'll form into a beautifully dense hedge, almost like a, a board. You can prune them so tight. They're fairly long lived. They have few pests and diseases. Uh, occasionally, Texas root weevil might be a problem. But other than that, they can be incredibly, incredibly long-lived. Very, very deep rooting system that makes them fairly drought tolerant as well. Um, we've got a couple here to start with. And this one is number 1,127, Texas Media Densiformis. And as the name implies, dense U, right? Now, this one hasn't been pruned for a while, but you'll see in here, you can see this characteristic where it's really quite thick, and that's unusual for an evergreen shrub. Densiformis is one of the slower growing ones because it's quite compact. These are 15, 20, year, uh, 20 years old probably by now, and they're still really quite dense with the uh, current season's growth, but you can see the branching, right? So on a dense U, there's regular branching with very short stems, and that gives it the uh, dense characteristic. What you see here are the flowers, and they're going to open and they're going to release clouds of pollen in the spring, very early spring. If you go onto the website, you'll actually see some close-up pictures of the flowers open. And they can be from small to quite large, depending on the species and the cultivar. So this one, uh, over time, forms a loose mounding uh, form. There are a couple of them in here. There's probably three or four planted in here. They'll form a loose mounding arrangement. And they will get about uh, two meters across by about two meters tall eventually. And they, again, if you want a low hedge, then this would be the candidate for it. Plant it and then tr uh, train it very early. And we, we know that a head shape should be like this. All right? And that's when you plant and train ewes, that's the way they should be. Wider on the bottom than the top get sunlight there. Most people put hedges and they put them in straight and what happens is the top then shades the bottom and the bottom starts to thin out. The advantage with ewes is after a number of years, you know, uh, if you go to Europe you'll see a lot of ewe hedges that are hundreds of years old. After a number of years you can actually go in with a chainsaw and prune them right back and reshape them because hedges over a period of time begin to uh, lose their form because you get different people pruning it, etc, etc. So um, at the Niagara Parks Botanical Garden, we had a hedge there that's uh, over 75 years old and needed to be re re uh, rejuvenated. And so when I was a student, we actually took surveyor's transits that you use with Pat Tell and shot lines, put marks down and prune this hedge because it was a very symmetrical hedge. So you can do that texture. Yes. Yeah, that's not really a problem here, right? The problem is, it, and I notice this on a lot of your plant profiles, and I, I think I'm, I, I mentioned this, that when you look at plant diseases, it will list every possible disease known to man that that plant would get. But you have to look at it regionally and, and locally as well, because often we'll have populations of one pest and not another. I have never had a problem with ewes in, in uh, my 
30 odd years in the industry with really anything on them. So, so that's that one. And then 